Boy, oh boy. November has provided chaos. Not only with three big wins, two coming from the SEC, and a big time upset down in the ATL for the Atlantic Coast Conference. But all of a sudden, the CLP rankings came out, and we have even more questions than answers. We'll talk about what took place down in Oxford, Mississippi, and Baton Rouge, the reason, among other things, from week 11 of the college football season. When we'll also talk about what did the CLP ranking show and how did the playoff bracket confuse people this go around? The playmakers in the building getting ready to preview week 12 of the college football season. So bear it down the gridiron. Starts right now. <laughs> Good afternoon, good people. How y'all doing today? It's November 13th and it's on a Wednesday, so bearing down the grid iron is here. As you heard in the opening, a couple of upsets took place. The SEC continues to be in chaos, which led to a chaotic CLP ranking show on Tuesday. So we have more questions than we have answers when it comes to the college football playoffs. Well, we're going to dive into all of that. And plus, get you ready for week 12 of the college football season. As always, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank you for watching on the Playmakers Blog Network YouTube channel. Appreciate you. If you're watching on the Facebook channel or the Playmakers Blog Facebook channel, thank you very much. If you're watching on my personal LinkedIn page, thank you very much. You can also catch this on the Real Rise Radio. Shout out to my big brother, Rise at Health Day, 502 American Angel Radio. And also, we're also available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and wherever else you can find podcasts. Is it? So thank y'all for tuning in and today. And my brother, the bear man of Texas himself, is in the building saying, Yeet, what's up, sir? Uh, make sure y'all check him out. He's also a member of the Playmakers Blog Network, uh, Ringside Chaos, Cowboys Talk, Into the Net FC. He, he has his own thing going on, doing quite well. So y'all check him up. You love soccer, wrestling. You know, if, you're, if you love the Cowboys, and it's been a pretty worth year for y'all. But, hey, you still working with your team. 
that's the man you go listen to all right so uh, make sure you share this out bear man do what you normally do share it out make sure we get people in here this one be an interesting one so let's go ahead and get right into business right now and uh let's go ahead and begin the show what we normally do with our two minute drill And we're going to go ahead and bend our two-minute drill simply with this, all right? Wisconsin's Jack Derrio resigns after crash and the OWI arrests, okay? Former NFL coach, former Jessica Chadwick, NFL head coach at that. Jack Derrio, the senior advisor to Wisconsin's head coach, Luke Fickle, will resign has resigned after his arrest early Friday and cited for operating a vehicle while intoxicated in a crash up in Madison, Wisconsin. The real 61 was arrested shortly after midnight Friday after a vehicle he was driving hit a street sign, broke a fence, and came to a west in a yard, according to a Madison police incident report. Officer was dispatched to the scene located west of campus and Camp Randall Stadium at 12.35 a.m. Jackie boy, Jackie boy, Jackie boy. Can't be driving under the influence. You know this. You've been a head coach in the NFL. You have coached in college. Why are you doing stuff that you know you don't want your players doing? Why, sir? Got to be better than that. Got to be better. Okay? Nevertheless, Jack Dedrio resigns. He is no longer with the Wisconsin. We'll see if he's doing anything else or he's going to take time away from the game and focus on him. We shall see. Let's go to our next news. And uh, this is a painful one for Alabama. Alabama loses linebacker Coop Robinson to season-ending elbow injury. Alabama head coach Kellen DeBoer announced Monday that the critical tie will be without one of their top linebackers. Q Robinson for the rest of the season after Robinson suffered an elbow injury in the big win at LSU, which we'll get into later on in the show. The loss of Robinson, the 6'5", 241-pound redshirt seniors, is a significant blow to an Alabama defense that has allowed just one touchdown in the past two in the past two meetings with in the past two games that would be in against LSU and Missouri. That's a bit tough on okay? and the boy says, quote. Just a special, special person in every way. I hate to see a guy who pours so much into into it going through what he is going through. The one thing when I think about Q, it isn't just what he does on the field, but pre-practice. He's mentoring and he's doing things for other guys. He just cares so much about the team and cares so much about his place. Close quote. All right, Mr. Robinson, we hope that you have a uh, good, full recovery. And with you being a rare shirt senior, I do believe that's probably will end your college career. Maybe you'll get an extra year, depending on the NCAA, because we never know what it comes to the NCAA. We just never know. But you are, you should be getting a look at the next level, at the NFL level. So we hopefully we get to see you for the draft, hopefully, and do the things that you need to do at the draft combine to get yourself drafted to the next level from tuscaloosa to columbia missouri as the missouri tigers will have will be without center connor tolson for the rest of the season missouri red shirt junior office alignment connor tolson one of the country's top centers is out for the remainder of the season with a knee injury tolson injury came in the second half of a home of the home win over Oklahoma on Saturday night, he left the field without putting weight on one of his legs. He started 34 games at Central Missouri and is considered a strong prospect for this year's NFL draft. The extent of the injury and potential recovery time is uncertain, but in all indication, he is done for the season and it could be done for his college career. So same proposition that we gave to K. K. Robinson, we'll give to Connor Tolson. Full of recovery. Hope we get to see you at the NFL Draft Combine. See where you at. See if you get drafted to the next level of the NFL. Because they just said you are a strong prospect for the NFL. Sticking with the SEC, because it's been a fun week of SEC news. The SEC finds Ole Miss $350,000. LSU, 
thousand dollars for incidents held by the fans. The Southeastern Conference has fined Ole Miss three hundred and fifty thousand dollars and LSU two hundred and fifty hundred thousand dollars for instance involving fans during Saturday's games against Georgia and Alabama. We'll we recap both of those games in our next segment. Ole Miss occurred a $250,000 fine for a second offense of the lease. Policy prohibiting fans from entering the field. The school will also receive an additional $100,000 fine because of the, of the fans entering the field with 16 seconds left into the game without the game being over quite yet. LSU's first violation of the SEC policy against F Field Storm occurred the following last year's win against LSU. The $350,000 fine will go to Georgia in, in, in occurrence with the SEC policy for violating in conference game. If Ole Miss occurs a third offense of the field or court rushing, it will be subject to a Five hundred thousand dollar fine. So, old Miss, guess what? You can't do. You can't storm the field, and you can't storm the court. You got that? Hopefully, you do. Now, LSU was also fine. LSU fine stands from fans throwing bottles and other debris onto the field during Saturday's game against Alabama. The SEC's sportsmen. Game management and alcohol availability policy requires LSU to pay the fine and use all video resources to identify those who threw objects onto the field at the opposing team. Those identified will be prohibited from attending LSU athletic events for the for the 2024-2025 calendar year. That means those fans at LSU. But they look at this video and they find out that you was the one throwing stuff onto the field. Guess what that means? You can no longer attend any athletic competition games for the rest of this year into next year until the until the uh, sports calendar season is over. You see what happens when you done stupid stuff. See, we talked about Jack Real to begin this segment. Now we're talking about fans storming the field, which now they can't even storm the field or court. Or we're talking $500,000 coming out of the old Miss pockets. And then LSU gets a $250,000. And then every fan that they have caught and identified throwing stuff on the field, you will be no longer attending LSU athletic events. Great job. What a swell job. LSU fans, great job. Great job. All right. Then we get to, uh, then we get here. John Robinson, former USC football and Rams coach, dies at the age of 89. John Robinson, the veteran football coach who enjoyed many years of success at USC and with the Los Angeles Rams, has died. He was 89. The Rams confirmed. His death on Monday, he died in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and with complications from pneumonia. Jesus, please. Robinson is, is on a high of the short list of football coaches who enjoy success, significant success at that in both the college and the pro ranks. He went 104, 35, and 4 at USC and 75 and 68 with the Rams. Winning postseason games and contending for championships regularly with both teams. Robinson was particularly successful in bowl games going eight and one in the postseason with USC and UNLV. Thoughts and prayers are with the Robinson family. Did a lot of good things for the University of Southern California. And he done some good things with the Los Angeles Rams. I'll speak on that on Ramley Talk. It's just the way it is. You just hate that it happens, but that's the way it is. Um, we are not done because we got some more news to dive into real quickly to close out our two-minute drill. Oklahoma president and AD back Brett Venable amongst struggles. The University, of, the University of Oklahoma's president and athletic director gave football coach Brent Venable a vote of confidence on Tuesday after the school board's regular meeting. The Sooners are 5-5 five five overall and 1-5 in the SEC. 
During their first season as a Southeastern Conference team, Venable in his third season with in the Norman, Oklahoma, has a 21 and 15 overall record. The president, Joseph Hauser Jr., said, quote, We all get emotional during the course of a season. What's unraveling is the what is unwavering is the commitment to him. This is a new era for us, but it's also a new era for college athletics. And there's going to be a lot of adjustments, and there's going to be a lot of that taking place. As far as my commitment to Venable, it's 100% close, quote. All right. So we heard last week Scott Strickland bought a conference for Billy Napier, so he'll be back for Florida. This week we have Oklahoma coming out. They are back in Brent Venable. So two programs that are not having a productive season are both backing their head coaches in the Southeastern Conference. Very, very interesting here. And then finally, now we get to a school that was not in the SEC. That was fine. University of Southern Cal, fine. Put on probation for 2022-2023 violations. The USC football program has been fined $50,000 and placed on a one-year probation because of violation of all and off-field coaching activities, the NCAA announced Tuesday. After conducting an investigation, the NCAA found that USC exceeded the permissible number of countable coaches by six during the 2022 and 2023 seasons. The NCAA re released a statement saying, quote, eight analysts for the football program engaged in on and off field coaching activities during the spring of 2022, the fall of 2022, and the spring of 2023. Resulting in the football program exceeding the permissible number of countable coaches by six for two academic years. As a result of the violations, the parties also agreed that the football head coach, Lincoln Roddy, violated head coach responsibilities, rule, close, quote. The NCAA said that because of some of these violations occurred before the rule changes in January of 2023 that shifted head coach responsibilities from a rebootable permissive to an automatic attachment, Riley, who was hired by USC in November of 21, would not be suspended. Nevertheless, though, they are on probation. Aside from a year probation and the $50,000 fine, the NCAA Committee of Infractions Approval further penalties, USC will be restricted from having the special teams analysts in practice and film review for six consecutive days during two weeks of the 2024-2025 season. So. It's been a lot going on here, and the University of Southern Cal is paying the price for it. All right. And that would conclude our two minute drill. We got some comments here. Uh, Bear Man is shaking his head at Jack Real. I really don't blame you because why is you driving? Why intoxicated, sir? Somebody explained that to me. And he also said it doesn't matter how many times a school gets fined for when fans jump on the gridiron because come a big win from an underdog against a giant is going to happen. I can see that, but we're talking old Miss in Georgia, though. So is it really a big win? Well, I guess in case for Lane Kevin. Did I say that loud? My bad. All right, we're going to take our commercial. We're going to take our first commercial break in. And when we come back, recap of a chaotic week 11 that became a chaotic college football playoff ranking release. Mm -hmm. We'll be back. In a world where chronicles of the past are brought to the streams. Whether the content is relatable or completely beyond your realm of life, there is no shadow of a doubt that this show is absolutely full of shenanigans. Get ready for D. Willie in the Evening. This Sunday at 10.05 p.m. Eastern. Exclusively on Sertoba Media. 
where the struggle is real to be awesome. Cool McCain. You thought you wanted Gunther against Chad Gable, but you didn't. And I'm going to tell you why. Chad Gable would take everything that Gunther's done and bury it. The Playmaker. It was on site. AJ Styles walked out there seeing LA Knight. Oh, okay. And then we, LA Knight hopped out the car. Let's go. Break down everything in TNA, AEW, and all of the WWE programming. Join these two kings, monarchs of wrestling, live every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Central on the Play Caller Sports Talk YouTube channel. Sports fans are gearing up. Would it be for the madness of March? Would it be for the Super Bowl? Or even a little thing called WrestleMania? You can get all that at Fanatics. Where they have a wide selection of gear from every league, including the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, the NHL, the NCAA, and the WWE. So go on and show that pride, that passion, that dedication fan that you are by whipping your team, your league, or your favorite player. Fanatics, official license, everything. Whether it's the men's college game, the way that this season has been going, uh, yeah, anything is possible. The women's college game. And how passionate Angel Reed was at that press conference. They got their mojo now. The WNBA. AJ Williams, Brianna Stewart, one and two, followed by Brittany Griner, Aaliyah Boston, Jackie Young. Or the NBA. The Lakers had a 0.8 chance of winning. And then what happened in the fourth quarter? LeBron James by himself outdid the Clippers. You will get any and all of the information right at your fingertips or your earlobes. Join the playmaker as he breaks down all things basketball in Shooting Lights Out on the Playmaker's blog, network, YouTube channel, and where you can find podcasts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bearing Down the Great Iron here on this Wednesday, November 13, 2024. Now that we got our two men drew out the way with our news and notes from the college ranks, now that's we view what took place in week 11 of the college football season. It is time for the Great Iron Roundup. And let's go ahead and get to our gridiron roundup here. And as you can see here, we had an upset in the opening window, which we'll get into a little later. Shout out to West Virginia Mountaineers going on the road to Cincinnati, getting a 31 to 24 win. And the University of Texas, the fifth ranked team in the land, did what they were supposed to do to my Florida Gators. 49 to 17. And I told Cole Johnson when he was on the show yesterday that they was going to beat the brace off us. And I was right. We had a third string quarterback in. And you expect me to believe that we was going to go into Austin, Texas and put up and put up a decent fight against the Texas Longhorns who was fully healthy. I didn't think so. Thank you very much. Texas destroyed us. And yeah, they did what they supposed to have to. But the one game that we're going to focus on from this set. It's the upset in the ATL. Georgia Tech 28, fourth rank Miami 23. And I wish Cool McCain was here right now because uh, I asked him a simple question. I asked him a very simple I said, How long is it going to take for y'all to keep winning these and keep being these tight, close shootouts before y'all get caught? Well, you went to Atlanta, you got beat by Georgia Tech. And this is the second year in the row. The second year in a row, ladies and gentlemen, that the Yellow Jackets have beat the Hurricanes. Those of you who don't probably forget, take you back to last year, Miami, Hard Rock Stadium. Miami has the ball. Just a kneel down with salt to game away. Nope. What does Mike Cristobal call? He calls a running play. He gives the ball to his running back. His running back from most of football. And then three. I think it's three or four plays later, Georgia Tech turns it into a touchdown. 
and they win the game by one point. Heartbreak in Miami, which they was having a bad season anyway, but even more bad after that game. And then you come into this year, you go into the ATL. You know everybody's going to remember that game because that was just unspeakable. The game was already won. The game was in hand. All you had to do was kneel on it, but you see, you gave it to your running back. You run it back from, but enjoy the tech, capitalizes on it. So we know everybody's going to talk about that game. With Cam Ward being a Heisman front runner, the way that Miami's looking, they dropping 50 points here, 40 points there, uh, 40 piece here. Will Georgia Tech be ready for this type of offense? They held the Hurricanes to 23 points. Mm -mm -mm. Georgia Tech scored a touchdown in every quarter. Miami scored 10 points in the first, six points in the third, and seven points in the fourth. They didn't even score in the second quarter. And that's all it took for the Jail Attackers to knock off the Canes for a second consecutive year. Now let's get let's get to the numbers, shall we? Four hundred and thirty-six yards of total of total yards for the Canes to the Yellow Jackets, three seventy. Miami had a turnover; they never turned Georgia Tech over. Twenty-three first downs to only eighteen for the Yellow Jackets. But look at the time of possession: Yellow Jackets thirty-four and forty-nine. Almost ten minutes better of time of possessions. Than the Canes, which means you limited the amount of opportunities Cam Ward had to make things happen. That's a great job by the Georgia Tech coaching staff, the offensive coordinator. When you hold a powerful offense, when you put them, when you keep them off the field, as long as Georgia Tech did, good things start to happen, which did for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Now, speaking of that Heisman front runner, Cam Ward, 25 or 39. 348 in the air with three touchdowns. Martinez, 15 carries, 81 yards. You can't be mad with the numbers that uh, Cam Ward has put up. It's still Heisman numbers, but it did come in the air. And Philo for the Yellow Jackets, 5 for 10, 67 yards on the touchdown. King, 20 carries, 93 yards on the touchdown. Was It's not pretty. Not numbers that knock your socks off. But it got them a dub over the fourth ranked team in the country. Wow. And a little later on in the show, we'll see how far did this loss hurt the Miami Hurricanes for as in the rankings, but did it really hurt them for us playoff positioning? That is the big question here. But yes, shout out to the Yellow Jackets second consecutive year knocking off the Miami Hurricanes. That gots to be a stinger there. It has to sting. All right. The next set of games that we have here, we saw Indiana host Michigan. And they took care of business against Michigan 20 to 15. They still got another test coming up on their schedule against Ohio State. But we'll, when the time comes, we will get to that game. Uh, Offert, Mississippi, we'll talk about that game in a bit. Blacksburg, Virginia. Virginia Tech Hosey hosting 23rd ranked Clemson. K Company and Company led by Dabble Sweeney. They went to there. They they felt the Enter the Sandman group. Tradition and all that, but it came out on top 24 14 in Blacksburg. Not a very easy place to win it, but the fighting dabbles they came out on top. Good win for them. And then we'll talk about Coach Prime and what they did at Little Texas in a minute. But first, our spotlight game of the week took us to Oxford, Mississippi. It was the old Miss Rebels, ranked 16 in the country, hosting third rank the Bulldogs of Georgia. And what can be said about what took place in this one? Old Miss 28, the Bulldogs 10. They were held to 10 points. The Georgia Bulldogs here, you know, Kirby Smart, defensive guy, but, you know, offense is known for putting up some points. Put up 34 in the loss to Alabama. Put up 30 in the ass whooping in Austin, Texas. They gave the they gave the long haul something to think about. You know, they put up 30 against Florida in a hard fought game. But 10, the Ole Miss Rebels, led by Lane Kiffin, who was an offensive minded coach, only allowed Georgia to get 10 points. Only 10? Man, look at here. We're looking at 396 yards of offense from the Rebels to only 246 from the Bulldogs. Three more turnovers by the Bulldogs. 
and you know what the turnovers do. You see that time position at the bottom, 32, 15 for the Bulldogs. You're talking, you're talking about close to six minutes. It gets negated because you turn the ball over three times. Three times. Carson Beck threw another pick. Had a fumble. I think he had both fumbles, by the way, if I remember correctly. But I know he had a pick and at least one fumble. So the turnover machine, Carson Beck, continues to eat a road to Georgia Bulldogs, and they don't look as a team that you need to be feared. Uh, Nathan Frazier, 12 carries, 47 yards, and a touchdown. That is your lead in Russia. What is up with Travis Etienne? Oh, Trevor Etienne, my bad. I I'm thinking the well, he ain't doing too good with Jason Ware right now either. So both of them could be in this spot. But Trevor Etienne, the transfer from Florida, you're not looking so good, is you, sir? Frazier is your lead in Russia, and he only had 47 yards. Carson Bell only threw for 186 yards. No touchdowns and a pick. The mighty Bulldogs of Georgia are not so mighty anymore, are they? That is a second loss, and both are in conference. Alabama and now Ole Miss. Jackson Dart, he didn't have guardian numbers, 13 for 22, 199 yards, that sounds in a pick. He also was the leader of Russia, eight carries for 50 yards. It amazes me. Lane Kiffin won that one. Lane Kiffin won a big game. Got to give it to you, Lane. You, you got you a big win, Lane. Got to give it to you. I crush you when you lost the LSU, which you shouldn't have lost the LSU, but I crush you for that. I'm going to give you your praise. Your defense played a hell of a game. You hold a bull at all team to 10 points. And but not having great numbers on offense, end, which is your specialty, you did just enough. When you didn't push the envelope too much, you said, all right, defense playing great, offense having their little problems, but be, we are up 18 on the board. I'll we'll leave it like that and get out of here with a big thumb dub. Despite the fans doing what they did and all the fines and, and all the fun that you got, no matter what. Lane Kiffin, you got you a big one, sir. Congratulations. You beat Kirby Smart. And Georgia, oh boy, when I get to these rankings, Georgia fans are angry. And you know what? You can be angry at the committee. You can be angry at how they did things, but be angry at your team because you didn't show up in Oxford. You just didn't show up. From Marshall, Mississippi to Lubbock, Texas, where the Red Raiders coming off a big win against Iowa State in Ames, Iowa. Now they are hosting 20th rank Colorado Buffaloes, led by Coach Deion Sanders prime time. And uh, third quarter, Colorado went on a tear in the second half, outscoring the Red Raiders 31 to 14 in the second half. That's winning 41 to 27. We're looking at 388 yards for offense for the Red Raiders, but three turnovers, three of them. Colorado 351 of offense, no turnovers. There go your difference right there. Three turnovers, Colorado turned those into points. And that's how you go from being down 10 at one point in time, possibly on the verge of an upset on the road, to winning by 14 on the road and putting yourself in a prime position to contend for a playoff spot if you coach Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes, all right? Shadur Sanders, 30 for 43, 291 yards, three touchdowns. Travis Hunter, nine catches, 99 yards, and one of the three touchdowns. For the Colorado Buffaloes, you have Milton, 20 for 40, 20 completions for uh, 40 passes, 275, a touchdown, two touchdowns in one pick. Brooks, 31 carries, 137 yards and a touchdown. And you, But when you turn the ball over three times, especially at home, you lose games, which you did. Okay? So shout out to Coach Prime. Shout out to the Buffalo for getting a big road win and a not-so-easy place to get one in, in Lubbock, Texas, against the Red Raiders. All right, now, as you see here, we have South Carolina who backed up that big win that they had over Texas A&M by going to Nashville, Tennessee, and putting a nice good old beating on the Venerville Commodores, 28-7. to We'll get to Death Valley in a minute. And the sixth-ranked Nifty Lions of Penn State, 35-6, to went over the Washington 
Huskies and primetime action on the Peacock. But let's get to death out of the sight of college game day. It is the rivalry of the rivalry in the SEC. The Alabama Crimson Tide rolling into Death Valley in primetime against 15 rank LSU Tigers. This game was over before it even started. This game was over before it even started. Alabama jumped on these boys and it was no looking back. Jeez. Brian Kelly, where was your team at, at home? And Baton Rouge, where was, where was y'all? They actually brought a live tiger to the freaking field, and the tigers that's in white and purple didn't even show up for the game. What the hell happened in Baton Rouge? Jeez, Louise, 421 of total yards for the Crimson Tide, 343, but you had three turn. Now you see a thing here, ladies and gentlemen, from week 11 turnovers, turnovers. All the questionable games that we looked at, at teams that didn't play right, all turned the ball over. They all lost a turnover battle. And that's how they lost. Miami lost a turnover battle. Lost to Georgia Tech. Georgia lost a turnover battle at Oxford. Got beat by Ole Miss. We just looked at Texas Tech trying to up, trying to build on their upset win from a week ago against Colorado. They turned the ball over and Colorado got out of there. Now we're looking at LSU and Alabama. LSU turned the ball over. That's four games that we just looked at. Turnover is the story of week 11. If you turned the ball over, you took L's in week 11. And good gracious. And it's not, and it's not like Alabama had a passing offense. They was just running the ball down your damn throat. Jelly Miro, four, 12 carries, 185 rushing yards and four touchdowns. Passing game, he only went 12, 12 for 18, 109 yards. Because damn it, he was like, well, if y'all can't defend the run, why would I throw it? Which I don't, and this one I don't blame him. Hell, y'all not stopping me from running. Why the freak would I stop running? 12 carries 185 yards. I'm going to do some real-time math here, okay? So he had 180 yards rushing on 12 carries. Jalen Merrill was averaging 12? No, Jalen Merrill in the running game. Jalen Merrill, the quarterback for the Alabama Christian side. Average 15.4 yards a carry against LSU. Now I'm gonna say that again. Jalen Murrow, the quarterback for the L for the Alabama Crimson Tide against the LSU Tigers on prime time at Death Valley had a average of 15.4 yards a carry in Baton Rouge. <laughs> Brian, Brian, Brian Kelly. See, we thought you was gonna come home. You know, you were gonna try to make amends for what took place with Texas A and M. And when you went up against their running quarterback, uh, Marcel Reed, Reed, if I remember his name correctly, thought you was gonna come home from that ass whooping that y'all took in in in, in College Station. In Texas, thought you was gonna come home knowing that it is Alabama week. It is called Hate Week for the for those who don't know, and you will show up to play. They brought a real tiger to the field and everything, but no, you let Jalen Miro run run down your goddamn throats like y'all was Swiss cheese. Fifteen point four yards a carry at home. You you y'all won y'all won that. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, when he did this. Y'all was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Where the hell was the run defense? Who was the person that was supposed to be containing Jalen Merrill? 12 carries, 185 yards, and four touchdowns. Not to miss you, you turned the ball over three damn times. How you the home team, you turn the ball over three times. You're the home team! Brian Kelly, Brian Kelly showed up again. Jeez, Louis, is that back to back we said that god dog. Mm, mm, mm. You got a big win over Ole Miss. You win the driver's seat in the South 
Eastern Conference to get to Atlanta. And then back to back, we should take your ass whooping at Texas AM. And then Alabama walks into the Dev Valley in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and they do this to you. And it's Jalen Merrill's running all over you. Not throwing, not throwing the ball, running all over you. This is the stuff we be talking about when it comes to coaches like Brian Kelly. And some I'm not going to throw Lane Kiffin in there this time. Lane Kevin got a big win. So Lane Kevin is off the hook this week. He got a big win over Georgia. He's off the hook this week. Brian Kelly, you showed up in oh so fashionable way. Jeez Louise, what the hell was that? Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I had a 500 week in week 11. Five and five. Yep, uh, Cincinnati. Took one against West Virginia. We already talked about the upset in the ATL. Uh, we already talked about that issue in Georgia. And then I did. I I, I didn't think South Carolina was going to back up that big win against Vanderbilt, but they backed it up. They went to Nazareth and they handled business. So five and five on the year. Sixty nine and forty one overall. Still pretty good. Doing pretty well. So, yep, yeah, that would do it for the. Uh, Great Iron Roundup, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're going to take another commercial break here. And when we come back, uh, we're going to talk college football playoff rankings and what confusion is there this week. Before we get into our campus tour, so we'll be back. Join the transporter to Hades. Your butt and gut becomes one. Join the reformer of hooker whores. This is my daughter, Placenta Booty Johnson. Join the bronze car. And ever you are in distress, Mm -hmm. take off your baseball cap and throw it in the air. Join your very own superhero of broadcasting, Chris Bass. So whatever color crown they get, they palm it and do two circles, (laughs) and that translates to... I can be the black people. As she takes you through the week's paces in Baseline. Live every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central. No, Pacific Time Zone people, just stay asleep when this is on live and just catch the recording. Oh, I'm sorry. Exclusively on the Chris Bass YouTube channel. Drew Willingham. In this case, yeah, you put the blame on Kyle Shanahan for apparently not preparing the team enough for the overtime rules, supposedly. Cole Johnson. Peyton was considered the winner, and he was the darling of all darlings for Gerald. With a special appearance by Tyrone Alizé McDummy. Ain't nobody calling me. Text delete. Delete! 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 Join these two football enthusiasts as they give you Total Football Talk live every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central on the Sertoba Media and the Comey Media YouTube channels. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bearing Down Great Down. Sorry about the tickle dip difficulties earlier but don't worry i will fix it i'll fix it and you'll get the full show all in one full swoop so we'll take care of that but as we continue on ladies and gentlemen before we get to our campus tour we got to talk about this playoff rankings and how it got confusing last night okay all right so here we go the CLP rankings week two edition came out, and here a lot of fathers in Oregon still at number one, Ohio State number two, Texas jumps to three, Penn State is at four, Indiana five, BYU six, Tennessee seven, Notre Dame eight, Miami nine, Alabama 10, Ole Miss 11, Georgia 12, Boise State, the first group of five team in the rankings at 13. You got SMU, Texas AM, Colorado State, Colorado. All you see is the rest of it down to Army and Tulane at 24 and 25. You look at it, you're like, okay, pretty good. I like what we're doing. This is pretty good. 
But then you get to the playoff bracket, and then you see uh, man, Oregon number one, obviously. Texas is number two. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Texas is number two, but they rank three. Hmm. You got BYU sitting in the third, sitting in the third seed slot, but they're ranked six. And then you have Miami, who's ranked ninth in the rankings, but they have the fourth slot, which means if the season would have ended today, Miami, Oregon, BYU, and Texas all get buys. If the season ended today, I know y'all confused right now. I know it. I know it. Then you see here, you see. You see, Boise State will be playing Ohio State, who is ranked second, according to the CLP committee. They'll be playing them, and the team that you don't see, who is ranked 12th to the committee, is the team that's out of the playoffs, which is the Georgia Bulldogs. What in the hell is going on here? I know, I know, I know. So, I think I need to say this every week, because this is how it's going to be. The four Power Four Conference champions get automatic buys in the playoffs. So if you win the ACC, if you win the Big 12, if you win the Big 10, if you win the Southeastern Conference, you get a buy into the quarterfinals, while the other seven slots are at large bid, and the highest group of five team gets in automatically, which will be the winner of one of the group of five conferences. Right now, the leading candidate is Boise State right now, and they do lead the Mountain West Army into lane. They are battling in the American, so we still got a lot of football to go. But conference championships get automatic buys, okay? Make a note, write it, whatever you need to write it at. Conference champions gets buys, okay? So that's why you see the BYU, who's leading the uh, Big 12, and that's why you see Miami, who's leading the ACC. Now, you got some more confusingness going on here because I thought about this. But playmaker. How is Texas still leading the SEC? Currently, they are not on top of the SEC right now, okay? Which I took Libra doing that for you. So let's go here. Let me show you the conference standings right now. You get to the ACC, you see SMU 5 0 in conference play. They are on top because they are undefeated in the conference play, and everybody else has at least one loss. You see Clemson, you see Miami. But, but hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. If LSMU is sitting on top of the conference correctly, why is Miami getting the getting the automatic buy? And why SMU is not in this system? That is a very, very good question. And here's what I know is about the committee. They are picking their conference champions. So they don't believe, despite what this says, that SMU can beat Miami. And they don't think Clemson will beat Miami. So Miami's in that slot. BYU 6-0, to top of the conference. You have no up, you have no say. Followed by Colorado, who's there. Iowa State still hanging around. The teams you see in these boxes here, there is all the teams that are still fighting for their conference. So you go from BYU, order down to West Virginia. All these teams are still alive for the Big 12. SMU, order down to Pitt. They're still alive for the ACC. Go to the Big 10. Indiana, order down to Penn State. They are still fighting for the Big 10. And then from Tennessee, all the way down to good old Brian Kelly, LSU Tigers. They are fighting for the Southeastern Conference. Now you sit here and you say, hold on, Pelly Maker. If I'm looking at this right, I do see Tennessee sitting at top right. Followed by Texas and you know, followed by Texas, right? Like, yep. But if you go back to the Texas is the one that is seated second with a playoff buy. Like I said about the Miami thing. They believe the playoff committee believes that Texas will win the Southeastern Conference. So even though Texas is currently sitting at third behind Texas AM and Tennessee, that Texas will win the Southeastern Conference. So I know it's confusing. I know it is. It is. And there's something. Uh, Pat McAfee said something on the show today, and I was watching, that I agree with. What if the what if the committee don't even do rankings? Like, what if we what if the playoff committee got rid of this spot right here? Just got rid of this and just focus on that. I think we'll be good. Because you'll sit here and then you get to say. You can't because 
Miami's ranked ninth. Okay, Miami's ranked ninth. And uh, if we look at the ACC, they are behind LSMU and Clemson, but yeah, you giving them the automatic buy. What? 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 What are we doing? You got Texas, who's ranked third in your rankings, right? They get the they get the second C in the automatic buy. But if you look at the standings, they're behind Tennessee and Texas A and M. Now, granted, Texas A Texas do control their own destiny because they do have Texas A and M at the end of the season. And if I remember correctly, they have. Let me go to the Southeastern Conference and see. We we'll look at the remaining. They they have a big game coming up this week, which we'll preview in campus too, because I know it's in there. You talking about Arkansas, Kentucky, and Texas A and M at the end of the season, so they control their own destiny. If they win out, they go they go to Atlanta and they fight for the Southeastern Conference. But it's the same thing with Texas A and M though. Let's look at Texas A and M remaining schedule, shall we? All right. They got New New Mexico State, Auburn, and Texas. And by the way, that game is in College Station, not in Austin, which means the Longhorns got to go to Kyle Field to take on the Aggies. Keep that in mind. And then we look at Tennessee. Tennessee, they have they have our spotlight game of the week. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that out there. They have our spotlight game of the week, and pretty sure y'all know what game that is against Georgia coming up. But we look at their schedule, depending on what happens with Georgia, because they still have Georgia coming up this week. They, they have a UTEP, and they finish the season off with at Vanderbilt. So the whole confusion is from the CLP committee did not help at all. Because when you did this, it confused it that right there. I'm with Pat McAfee. Take away the ranking system. Let's take away the top 25 CLP rankings. We don't we don't need that. We're gonna do it until team power. And then let's come out with this and explain your position on this. You can simply sit here and say, okay, based on what happened, we know that uh SMU is sitting on top of the ACC, but we believe Miami wins that conference as of right now. We like Miami's chances, so we slip them second as the ACC quote unquote ACC champion. Cool, fine. Yeah, the 13 of y'all was in the room. Y'all agree to that? Okay, we, we got an understanding now. BYU, we understand BYU, we understand when they strength the together and all that, but they are undefeated in the Big 12. They've been on top of the Big 12 for the longest, so we got to give them their spot. Texas, yeah, they took a loss to Georgia. We know there's just like a little tiebreaker with them, Tennessee, and Texas AM. Texas and Texas AM, they play in the late part of November. That's going to tell us a lot of everything we need to know about that. Tennessee has a big game, but we had to choose between them three to actually win the quote-unquote Southeastern Conference. We like Tennessee chances better than Texas A&M and Tennessee. All right, we got that. But when you did this right here, this is what made everything confusing. Because <laughs> now we're looking at BYU and how, they, how y'all see them as a six-ranked team in the country, but they get a bye. What? what, what? Even though conference champions... Conference champions gets automatic by, by the way. But you got Georgia ranked 12, but they are out of the playoff system. If you didn't have this and you said Georgia right now is out because they don't, they right now are not in position to win their conference. And with the group of five getting in automatically, that's the highest group of five. Somebody got to get left out. Plus Ohio State, and Ohio State looks good. Tennessee's right now. Looking pretty good. Penn State looks good. Ole Miss looks good after beating them. Alabama looks good, especially with the win against LSU. And then Indiana's undefeated. You see how easy that was for me to, to explain that? But that's not what they did. It it was so confusing last night. It I was just like, what are we, what are y'all doing? This doesn't match this, and this doesn't make sense to this. They are not connecting. So I'm with Pat McAfee. Get rid of the ranking system. Don't don't even do a top 25 ranking. If we if we have to use the if we have to use the AP top 25 for the entire season, we just do that. Don't even do this because when y'all do this, y'all confuse the hell out of everybody when y'all did that. Just let the AP do the top 25, even though we can care less about it. And then every Tuesday night, y'all just tell us this is where the playoff bracket looks right now because of this, this, and this, and that. 
Will it change? Yes, it will change. But man, that is confusing. That is very confusing because Miami don't even ha- don't even control his own. Miami is now looking up to SMU. Y'all couldn't put SMU in that slot as the leading. This one, that's another thing I should do. Whoever's leading the conference should be in that slot. And it's and you go ahead and say because they are leading their con- their conference as of right now. They will be the ones in that slot. Until that, that's what y'all should do. Whoever's leading in the conference should be in that slot. Because y'all y'all sit here and told us if you win your conference, you get the automatic buy. So in my opinion, Oregon, correct. Instead of Texas, that should be Tennessee because Tennessee is on top of the Southeastern Conference. BYU is correct because they're the only unbeaten team in the Big 12. And then SMU should be in Miami spot. And possibly you probably take out Ole Miss and throw Miami into the first round slot. Simple. But the committee complicated it to where people are now questioning what, 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 how. So how do y'all ranking teams and then how y'all see them in the playoffs? What the hell are we doing? Like what? What is this? So I'm wait. If you're complaining about how the CLP has done theirs this week, I am totally with you because it was very confusing. But hey, I simply I try to simplify it for you. They believe Miami, Oregon, BYU, and Texas will win the conferences. They believe Boise State will be the highest ranked Group of Five conference champion, which unfortunately will leave Georgia out of it because Indiana is undefeated. And by virtue by Indiana being undefeated and Boise State, got to give a group of five in there. At least Georgia out of it. But board off fans, you can get mad at the committee if you want to, but get mad at your team because you lost two games. Like winning matters, okay? I know we're gonna come here and say, man, they got they got one of the toughest schedules in the league. They had to play at Alabama, at Austin, at at Ole Miss, and uh, you know about the rivalry game with Florida. And, I get all that. I am a Southeastern Conference guy myself. But winning should matter. So I don't want people trying to discredit Indiana for being in the position to host a playoff game because nobody expected Indiana to be 10 and 0, which they are. Winning has to matter. You want to say who they win, all that other stuff? Don't care. They're undefeated. Out of everybody in this 12 team playoffs, Oregon's undefeated, BYU's undefeated, and Indiana's undefeated. Everybody else, all other nine teams in here Miami, Texas, Notre Dame, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Penn State, Alabama, Ohio State, and Boise State all have at least one loss. Winning should matter. I don't care. Winning should matter. You should be credited for winning your games. That's all I'm saying. So Indiana's in right now. Georgia's out of it. But Indiana has a game coming up. Not not this week, but they have a big game next week. And I can't wait to preview that game next week. And that might be my spotlight game of the week next week. Just to throw that out there. Okay. Now, obviously, I already showed you the standings and whatnot. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into our campus tour. And to begin our campus tour, let's head out to Maryland, where the 25th rank Green Waves of Tulane are taking on the Navy Midshipmen. This is a big game in the American. I know usually we don't do group of fives, but this is a good time to do it. You have the uh, American Athletic Conference right now. Army's leading the way at 9-0 and on the season, 7-0 and in the American play. Right behind them is Tulane, 8-2 and on the season. They are 6-0 in American play, and then sitting third, and the only team left to make things happen is the Navy Midshipmen at 72 overall, 5-1 in American play. This should be a good game. Tulane is coming into this game, averaging 42 points a game. They are combining for almost 500 yards a game, You're talking 214 through the air, 228 through the ground. They are 50, they're almost 53% third down. Uh, completion rate so this gonna be a nice game here i'm looking forward to this game 
and uh we'll see what happens navy they are averaging about 36 points per game they are 260 on the ground 137 through the air but their third down percentages is 39 so it is it's gonna be an interesting game between the green waves and the midshipmen and mr cole johnson's in the building how you doing hello cole johnson. he said thank you all miss and don't bleep it up texas well we're we, we, we gonna get to texas in a minute and he says i'm sorry good afternoon playmaker what's up cole how you doing sir appreciate you watching so i'm looking forward to this game all right let's get to our next game from maryland let's head to pittsburgh pa the pit panthers hosting 20th rank the dabble sweeney's of clemson clemson's get Clemson is a 10 point favorite on the road, 12 p.m. ESPN. Um, Dabble, you 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 didn't didn't look so well. Yeah, you, you, you snuck out of Blacksburg. Now you gotta go to Pitt. And you're looking up at SMU on top of the conference. Miami's behind you now because they decided to uh, <coughs> up in the ATL. So we might get SMU and Clemson in the ACC championship game down in Charlotte. We could get SMU and Miami down in Charlotte. And then for some odd reason, if SMU decides to screw up at some point in time with the next three weeks, we can get Clemson and, uh, and Miami in the, in the Charlotte. So it's going to be an interesting battle through the ACC. But tricky game. Tricky game and pick for a good old Dabo Sweeney. All right. Now, the aforementioned Longhorns, ladies and gentlemen, they go to Vanville, Arkansas. Yes, the third-ranked Longhorns of Texas, they head to Vanville to take on the Arkansas Razorbacks. 13-and-a-half-point favorites, all those god darn Longhorns on the, on the road. 12 p.m. A, B, C, and ESPN, and it says uh, 85.7% in favor of the Longhorns. I'm going to just say this, Cole Johnson, your Longhorns better be careful in Fayetteville. The Razorbacks are coming off a bye week. And they are licking their rooms. They have been rating for two weeks to get rid of this 63-31 to 31 ass whooping that they took to Ole Miss. And that was in Fayetteville, by the way. So, uh, I would say how Sarkeesian should have his boys ready for this one. And make sure they know that they understand the job at hand because... I think the Arkansas Razorbacks are coming to are coming for a fight. I'm gonna put it like that. They're coming for a fight. So we'll just see what happens. Cole Johnson says, uh at least Dabble Sweeney bounced back from the loss at at, at home to Louisville. Yeah, he yeah, he bounced back from that, all right. I give him that. He did bounce back from that. But it was not a uh it was a tough one, but he did bounce back. I give him that. From Fayetteville to South Bend because the Notre Dame Fighting Irish are taking on ACC member, the, the Virginia Cavaliers. 23-point favorites are the Golden Domes at home. And I would say they can't screw this up, but we did see them lose to Northern Illinois. But ever since that, they have been winning. I do believe they have been dominant in that spot as well, if I remember correctly. So we're looking at 3.30 on the NBC channel. Go figure. Now if I would look at this correctly, we're looking at, let me see, their last five games, they have won. They beat Illinois 31 24. They beat Stanford 49 7. They beat Georgia Tech 31 13. They beat Navy 51 14. And then last week, they they treated the Florida State Seminoles as cupcakes. They beat Florida State 52 to 3. So ever since they took that L to Northern Illinois, which was in South Bend, by the way, Notre Dame has been on a roll, and that's why they're ranked eighth in the CFP ranking. So Virginia, no, I won't sleep on Virginia. They are five and four in a year now. They are five and four. They're coming off a win at Pitt, 24 
to 19. So they are coming off a they coming off a win. Okay, so might wanna might wanna make sure that Marcus Freeman has his boys ready to do what they gotta do. And uh here you go. Here's my only great with the playoff. What is the world? What in the world is Notre Dame doing in the top 10? They need to be punished for three loss for three losses with that. Notre Dame knows defeat. Well, you can't punish them that much. They only lost one game, so and it's the one game. Maybe if uh, other teams like Texas, Georgia, LSU, Alabama. Notice I picked all the teams from the Southeast Conference. You know that, right? Maybe all of them wouldn't have screwed up. Maybe Notre Dame wouldn't be in the top 10 right now. But no, everybody want to beat everybody else up. And also, Notre Dame did this cap on win. Cap on win. They found us right back in it. You see what happens when you don't do your damn job? Texas, Georgia, LSU, Alabama, Texas a and Ohio State, Penn State. You see what happens? When, when you don't do your damn job, a team like this, who lost to Northern Illinois at home, found themselves back in it. So, Cole Johnson, do me a favor. I know how you feel about Northern Illinois, but do me a favor. Tell the teams in our conference to stop effing things up. We want to be in this predicament. Since nobody wanted to be dominant, Notre Dame found us up back in it. They put their head down and they just kept on winning. So this is what happens. When you have chaos, like I said, November football, this means more. When you have chaos in the month of November, things like this happen. Notre Dame crept their survey back into the top 10. Because everybody else beating each other up. Nobody wants to be dominant. Outside of Oregon, BYU, and Indiana, the only unbeaten teams in the power five in the power four conferences. Everybody else took a nail, which opens the door for you know, yeah. Yeah, Texas has one loss, but guess what? That one loss opened the door as well. Okay, you took it lost to Georgia, who has two losses now. Could be three. Depending on how this weekend goes. Just open. What do what do we always say? If you if you put if you have a good team on the rose and you don't take them out, guess what happens? You lose. You you Notre Dame just put their head down and winning, and then everybody else want to beat each other up. So yes, they are back in it. And the only way to get them out of it is they lose again, which I don't see happening. Well, then again, they do have a they do have a date with Army coming up, an undefeated Army team at that. So that should be a game I might be interested in watching. Notre Dame and Army. Now, the last time they played an undefeated team, that was Navy going in. They smacked the brakes off <laughs> off Navy, and Navy haven't been the same since. But yeah, they got a date with uh, they got a good old date with Army coming up. I'm looking forward to the game. Matter of fact, when is that game with Army? Because I might actually watch that game. I actually might watch my Army game for once because Army is undefeated. So they have Virginia this week. They have Army next week, and it's in South Bend. Oh, oh boy. Next week, looking like it's going to be a juicy week 13. Looks like it's going to be a juicy week for me and college football fans. Week 13. Oh, my gosh. That's going to be lovely. All right. Cole says, uh, and then the fighting Irish have the road pay for them with five easy ACC games. Well, when you when you when you beat each other up, it don't matter how you put it, you can't defend the fact that everybody beating each other up, which opens the door for them. Then we have pe- people believe the Big Ten's a powerhouse, and they are all powder puffs, except for Oregon. You better put that last part in there because Oregon's going to defeat it, sir. From South Bend to Gainesville, Florida. As the Florida Gators coming off that thumping that I told Cole Johnson that was going to happen in Austin, Texas. He didn't believe it was going to happen. He thought 21 points was too much for his own team. I said, man, it's going to beat us by more than 21. And look what happened. They beat us by more than 21. 
And then you have the LSU Tigers ranked 22nd in the college football playoff rankings. Coming off that ass when they took to Alabama. Four and a half point favorites. Are the Tigers going to go into the swamp? I don't even know how. I don't even know what. I don't even know what to say about this. Four and a half. Four. Uh, ESPN says four and a half. There are some books that says four. Damn, they have no faith in LSU. <laughs> Jeez. We have a third string quarterback, man. And there's a possibility that DJ Larry could come back. I don't want him to come back. I do not want DJ Larry to come back at this moment in time. We're talking, we're talking about a hamstring here, okay? We are talking about a hamstring, all right? Let that man rest, okay? But for it. ESPN said there's a 57.3% chance of LSU winning this game to a Florida's 42. They are giving Florida 42% with a third string quarterback. <laughs> Boy, people have jumped off the LSU bandwagon after what Alabama did to them. Good gracious. Brian Kelly, you need your ass whooped. You should be fired for letting Alabama. They caffeinate all over you in Baton Rouge. <laughs> so you, you missed my stat earlier when I said about Jillian Murrow. Good gracious. Would you have faith in LSU? They're horrible. Florida has a third string quarterback. <laughs> Jeez. We are playing a third string quarterback. If LSU lose to a third string quarterback in the swamp, Brian Kelly might get fired. And that means Florida have a chance to make be to be bowl eligible because we still got Florida State on the schedule. Oh my gosh. Oh. It says, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Cole says Alabama beat them by 29. High school teams can beat them. You just being disrespectful now. There's no way a high school team can beat LSU. That's not good. Bear man says I've lost confidence in Quentin years. Don't worry, Bear man. Depending on how he looks this week against Arkansas, I think you'll get your confidence back. We shall see though, but it is Arkansas we're talking about here though. So that's that's keeping it honest. Let's go from the Gainesville to Columbia, South Carolina. 21st ranked game card who backed up that big that big no not I mean big win. Against Texas AM and a trip to Nashville with a dub against the Vanderbilt Commodores and shutting them down. They only scored seven points. Now they're at home hosting the Missouri Tigers, who have fallen from the grace of glory. 12 points are the game cards at home. Now I'm just going to leave it like that. Let's go to Manhattan, Kansas, where the uh, Kansas State Wildcats weren't. 16 in the country. Our nine point favorites at home against Arizona State Sun Devils. Okay. This is a big one in the Big 12 because uh, Kansas State wants to keep pace with BYU. All right. At 72 on the season. But Crutcher did lead, though. Quite some did lead, though. The Sun Devils are quietly 7 and 2. Now, how in the hell did who has Arizona State play to get themselves 72? Well, they beat Kansas 35 31. They beat Utah 27 19. Their second loss came at Cincinnati, who was an up and down team, by the way, 24 to 14. They went to Stillwater, Oklahoma, and they doubled up on the, the Mike Gundy's 42 to 21. And then they hosted UCF this past week and they beat them 35 31. It's going to be an interesting game. Very interesting game here. Uh, Cole Johnson says, uh, Kansas State got, him, got forgotten all of a sudden, didn't they? Well, when you're Kansas State and uh, you lose at Houston last week, you see why, 24 to 19. You lost to Houston. You cannot lose to Houston, Kansas State. That's why. Okay. 
Then you, you're you ran through Oklahoma State. You you went to Boulder, Colorado. You took care of Coach Brown and Colorado Buffalo. You went to West Virginia. You took care of them. You took care of Kansas. Then you lose to Houston. And Cody Johnson is taking a shot at me at this one. And the youths are filling the Big 12 competition now. Ah, shut up. Cross the daily, ain't none of my conference picks have gone well, okay? <laughs> the only one is Oregon. Okay? Jeez Louise. Those of you who don't know, I pit Florida State to win the ACC. I pit Utah to win the Big 12. I pit Georgia to win the Southeastern Conference. And I pay Oregon to win the Big Ten. Yeah. My picks for a conference champion are not good this year. They were great last year. Not good this year. Then we go to the Mountain West. Yes, I'm giving you two group of five games this week because they are important games. We go into the Mountain West in prime time. San Jose State hosting 13 ranked Boise State. In a very big game in the Mountain West, okay? And those of you who wants to know about the Mountain West, right now the Boise State Broncos lead it at 5-0 and on the year. The Colorado State Rams, second 4-0 and in conference play. Then you have UNLV at 3-1, and and then you have San Jose State at 3-2. and Very big game. Boise wins this game. They can pop, They can most likely put themselves in the uh, title game, which they will be hosting in the Blue Foot of Boise, Idaho, in their game, because they'll beat San Jose. They'll move them to 6-0 with only Wyoming left for conference play before they host Oregon State. All right. For San Jose State on the other, on the other end, they got some work to do and they need some help. Can they do the unthinkable and beat the Boise State Broncos at home? They host UNLV before they host Stanford. So this game has a lot riding over if you're in the Mountain West. Boise can win this game. They pretty much say, uh, we clinch a spot in the uh, Mountain West Championship. We'll be hosting it. And who wants to come to the blue turf in Idaho for this game? So this is a very massive game. 13 and a half out of Broncos. And you know, Ashton Gentry is a Heisman candidate. That man has been unstoppable this year. What he has done is remarkable. I, I believe he's closing in on 2,000 yards rushing, if I remember correctly right now. Let me go look at the statistics here for Astrid Gentry. Astrid Gentry, he has rushed for 1,734 yards with 23 touchdowns. So that man's been on a roll. And the way he's been rolling, he might get over 2,000 yards rushing. So the way he's been rolling, he has – Two games left, possibly three. Well, he could definitely get the 2,000 yards rush. So I'm looking forward to that one. And we go to Ains, Iowa. We're going to the Big 12 because uh, Iowa State and Cincinnati, they do battle in Ames, Iowa. This is particularly a uh, Big 12 elimination game here because you have the Iowa State Cyclones sitting at Four and two in conference play right behind Colorado and BYU. Then you have the Cincinnati Bearcats at three and three, trying to play spoiler at this point. Iowa State cannot lose this game. They have fallen off. You want to talk about a team that's been forgotten about, Cole Johnson, but about the Cyclones of Illinois of, of Iowa State. I mean, you lost to Texas Tech two weeks ago. And then you got beat by Kansas in a shootout, 45 to 36. And all of a sudden, the Pumpson season for the Cyclones has been flipped upside down in two week, in a two-week span. In a two-week span, the Cyclones have put themselves on the brink of elimination after having such a promising start. And then back-to-back weeks, you got shot completely shot so cincinnati if they make it three in a row the cyclones of illinois go bye-bye in the big 12 
that's just remarkable, right? Nico says, since he went bye bye, the Bearcats eliminated themselves by losing at home to West Virginia. Yeah. And he says, Iowa State wasn't forgotten. They just straight fell off the map. Jeez. That was terrible. Very, very terrible from you guys. All right. And then we have our spotlight game of the week, which should come to no surprise because there's only one game this week in week 12 that you should look at this week. My friend, if I remember correctly, this is the only rank versus rank game of the week. Yeah. Nope. Missouri and South Carolina both ranked 21 versus 23, but outside of that, there's only there's only one other rank versus rank game. And let's go over the hedges, ladies and gentlemen, to Georgia. As the Georgia Bulldogs will look to what the fire. And I do mean what the fire. What took place at Oxford as they are hosting the seventh ranked volunteers of Tennessee 730 ABC. College game day will be in attendance at 9 a.m. So this should be a game to watch. Nico Alimiyama, he will be playing this week. That news came out today. Closing in on 1,900 yards passing with 11 touchdowns and four interceptions. Carson Beck, the turnover machine. Carson Beck, who had two more turnovers in Oxford this week. I believe he is up to a good 14, 15 turnovers in the last four games. That man has been a turnover machine, a legit turnover machine, and it is starting to hurt the Bulldogs right now. Okay. Now, with that being said, now you saw earlier, I gave you the standards earlier, but those of you who don't know, if you came in late, as of right now, the South East Conference is led by the seven ranked volunteers at five and one, followed by the 15 seat, the 15 ranked Aggies or Texas AM. Then you see the third ranked Texas at four and one. Then you go down the very next team after that, it is the Alpha Major Georgia Bulldogs at five and two. Followed by Ole Miss four and two, Alabama four and two, Missouri three and two, and LSU three and two. So a loss by the Bulldogs here at home in Athens, Georgia, and their season is done. If you know anything about the schools of the Georgias of the world, the Alabamas of the world, they don't care about bowl games; they care about championships. So a loss here. At home, we're in the bud out season. They cannot make the 12 team playoffs. I lost by the Tennessee Volunteers, and they put yourself in position that Georgia isn't going into this game. You have to fight and claw your way into the playoffs. All right. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is our campus tour. All right, before we move on to our next segment, Cole Johnson says, I am interested to see what will go down between the hedges. Both teams are playing for their playoff lives. This will be beautiful. I cannot believe this, but I have to root for Georgia so they can hang a second loss on to Tennessee. Says, I know, I know you're waiting for Tennessee playmaker since the Bulldogs. Are your most hated robberies? Well, let's see if that range true, sir, because it is now time to go to our Bear Down Play 10. <laughs> and let's get to the Bear Down Play 10 and give me the two lane green ways to uh, go to Maryland and take down the struggling all of a sudden. Midshipmen's a Navy. I like Tulane in this game. Sorry, Navy, but I think that ass when that y'all took at MetLife statement to the Notre Dame Fighter Irish. A lot of teams seen that, and they're starting to use that game plan against you. And I believe Tulane is the type of team that can do the same thing Notre Dame did to you. Give me the Fighting Dabbles to go to pit and get to, and get a dub. Continue their uh, hopes for making the playoffs and their hopes to go into Charlotte. 
to play for the ACC championship game. Hook'em horns. I mean, if y'all lose to Arkansas, if y'all lose to Arkansas, oh my gosh. The noise that would be on, on Austin, Texas would be remarkable. I don't see it happening. I see Texas handling their business and they beat Arkansas the way they're supposed to be beat Arkansas. Notre Dame, enough said. Give me the fighting Irish. LSU, Brian Kelly. You lose this game, you might be getting fired. Okay? Because there's no way in the hell you should lose two in a row. Especially after you the way that you looked against Alabama. You cannot lose to a third string quarterback. If you lose to a third string quarterback, just imagine what would happen in Baton Rouge if you lose to a third string quarterback in the swamp. Brian Kelly, don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to yourself. I'm taking the game, Cops. They are rolling. They are hot right now. They made a believe out of me last week when I picked Vanderbilt over them, and they shut down Vanderbilt. So give me the game, Cops. Defend home tour for Missouri, who has fallen off the map. Give me Kansas State Wildcats. I think they are in a position where they know they need to win to give themselves a chance to get to uh, Arlington, Texas at at t Stadium for the Big 12 Championship game. Give me Broncos, man. Like, did y'all think, I, y'all, did y'all really think I was going to find a way to pick San Jose State? Not a chance. Not a chance in this world. Nah, can't do it. I'm going to go with the Cyclones here because both teams don't know how to win big games. I got to pick one of y'all to win. So give me the goddamn Cyclones here. Yeah, give me the Cyclones here. Give me the Cyclones here. And then we get to our spotlight game. But before we do that, Cole says, all right, Tulane, rep New Orleans the only way you know how. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing coming for you, to be quite honest with you. He says, I agree, playmaker. If the Longhorns lose to Arkansas, we don't deserve to go to a bowl game. Forget a bowl game. Y'all don't deserve it to a playoff. It's all about playoffs. We don't care about bowl games. We care about playoffs. And he says, get them, Gators. Get that fake Southern Baptist preacher out of here. If that man loses to a third-string quarterback, oh, my gosh. All right, for the spotlight game of the week, and you know when we do our spotlight game, we got to go to the fans. And the fans have spoken volumes. I hope you are ready for this. 69% are on the Bulldogs. 69% are on the Bulldogs. Only 31% of the people are giving Tennessee a chance to go to Athens and beat the Georgia Bulldogs. After Georgia just got done getting beat by Ole Miss. Man, oh man, good gracious. Cole Johnson, you are wrong, sir. Give me the Bulldogs. I don't remember the last time Curry Smart lost two games in a row. Especially when the second game being at home in Athens, Georgia. I don't know if Ikla Amadeyaba is ready for this atmosphere that he's going to face in Athens, Georgia. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take the Bulldogs to win this game at home and keep their hopes for the trip to the ATL alive and hopefully a trip to the playoffs alive and Tennessee will be in the same position as them when this is all said and done Saturday night. So there you have it. Give me Tulane. Give me Clemson. Give me Texas. Give me Notre Dame. Give me LSU. Even over my Gators. Yes. Give me South Carolina. Give me the Wildcats of Kansas State. Give me Boise State. Give me Iowa State. And give me the Georgia Bulldogs over Tennessee. And the fans, 69% in favor of the Bulldogs over the Tennessee Volunteers. All right. Before we got it, Cole Johnson says, I didn't say you you were you were picking who you were picking. I say you were rooting for. Hell, if I was rooting for, I'll have both of them lose, to be honest. I can care less if either one. I knew you were going to pick Georgia to win that game. Hey, Amen. I am a football guy, okay? My team had their chance. 
they made it a very con hardly contested game. We took an L. That thing is done now. Now I go back to being a mentalist. Okay. I'm going for Georgia. Georgia. I don't see Georgia losing two games in a row, especially when the second one is at home. I just don't see it. And if I'm wrong and they do it, boy, Kirby Smart going to be feeling some heat as well. That's all I got to say. And with that being said, thank y'all for tuning in today. I know we had technical difficulties and I had to do a, another recording to get the second half in here, but we will fix all that in a post-production side of it. But thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for watching. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, the Play Makes Ball YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. So every time we go live, you'll get a notification. Plus, you'll see me tomorrow for Remy Talk discussing the, uh, yeah. yeah, discussing that game that took place on Monday night. Jeez Louise. I, I, don't, I have nothing to say on that, but I'll be done with that tomorrow. Uh, also, Catch this program on the Real Wise Radio. Shout out to shout out once again to my Brit brother Wise and Healthy. You can also listen to this on Fribble to American Angel Radio. Also, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and wherever else you find your podcast is at. You can find Bear Down and Great On. You can find Ram and you can find Shooting the Lights Out. Those of you who are asking about Shooting the Lights Out, sometime after Thanksgiving, I'll get back to basketball because I need a break from basketball. Because I went from the opening tip from last year of the NBA all the way up to when the New York Liberty won the WNBA championship. So I need a break from basketball right now. Don't worry. I'm catching some games. I'm, I'm watching. But give me till after Thanksgiving to get back into basketball right now, okay? Because what I want to focus on football because there's a lot going on in football right now. And I appreciate it. Uh, Cole Johnson says, uh, and you talk about me. If Texas and, and A&M play, I'll say I'll, I'm reaching for a tie. Yeah, and that's like the only that's like the only two teams I feel that way about. So the Rams did a great job playing. Make a shut up, Let's shut up. All right, now we'll do it for this session. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for watching. Um, I will see y'all next week for more Brand on the Great Iron. Catch me tomorrow for Ramley Talk. And until then, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. If you don't catch me tomorrow, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your football weekend. And I will see you next week right here next Wednesday for more Bearing Down the Gridiron. Deuces.